Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach, Florida. You can also call me Mr. Oxy if you'd like. You could even call me Mr. Energy, or low energy if you prefer. Uh, you can also call me Mr. Undervalued because what we are going to do today is uh, take another look at an undervalued energy stock. In this case, we are exploring Philips 66. Actually, more specifically, we are going to look at Philips Energy Partners Limited Partnership. Uh, and see if this is worth investing in or not. So thanks for joining me. Uh, stick with me and we'll take you uh, for a drive along the highway. And so as I said, we are going to be looking at Philips 66 and more specifically Philips 66 Partners. Um, this uh, little uh, demonstration or PowerPoint that I put together for you sort of uh, gives you an overview of both because I did not want to uh, view one of them or review one of them at the expense of the other. Would you invest in either of these, yes or no? We can take a look as we go. So first, my intro in terms of a little bit of background, um, David Klein uh, wrote to me a few days ago and he said, hey, Rudy, can you look at PX, PSXP, which is Philip 66 Partners? It tanked in June on the DAPL news and is still far below June levels, let alone pre-COVID. Uh, DAPL, in case you didn't know, is the Dakota Access Pipeline or backend pipeline, which is a 1,172 mile long underground pipeline in the United States. It was completed in April 2017, and its first oil was delivered on May the 14th, 2017. In other words, it became commercially operational around June of 2017. So David said, the business model seems to remain largely unchanged as a federal judge ordered the DAPL to remain in service and with oil improving, should the stock not see significant recovery going into 2021. David, so firstly, the macro is, um, it is almost fair for me to say all energy stocks are undervalued, especially if those energy stocks are specifically focused on oil or natural gas in terms of the, uh, the macro thesis as to why we would even be looking at these stocks to begin with. So that's the macro. So uh, let's dive into these a little and take a look at some of the macro components that make up Philip 66 versus Philip 66 partners, which is the limited partnership. So you have two different ticker symbols here. The one, uh, the, the, the main one, obviously for the common stock is PSX. Philips, you can see today, uh, a little bit earlier today, this was at 155. Eastern time, uh, today being December the 23rd, uh, Philip 66 common stock was trading at almost $70 and Philip 66 partners, which is the limited partnership, was trading at $27.38. They're both up today, all well in an energy stocks are up today. Uh, so these two um, were up as well. Uh, as you know, the saying is a rising tide will lift all boats. And today, most energy stocks are in fact up. If we look at the two, just as a comparison, a um, couple of things jump at me. Firstly, they're both multi-billion dollar corporations uh, in their own right. I look at the last quarter net income, not a very pretty picture for Philips 66 and not a bad picture for um, Philips Partners. Uh, most recent earnings uh, for the last quarter, which was reported on October 30th, negative a penny for Philips 66 and positive 85 cents for Philips Partners. So uh, we can see that there are some reasons why you might want to prefer one over the other in terms of this little uh, screenshot that I'm sharing with you right now. The other thing that's also interesting here right at the bottom of the screen, on the right hand side at the bottom, it says Philips Partners uh, PE ratio for the trailing 12 months, TTM means trailing 12 months, is 6.96. So uh, when you have a PE ratio of uh, less than 15, which is sort of the S&P 500 average where I wanna be below in terms of making an entry into a position, seven is certainly very attractive. But as I said a minute ago, uh, that might be true for most energy stocks. So the question here is, do you go with energy in terms of Philip 66 or something else? So when we look at the actual stocks, so let me just get to the next, um, slide here. When we look at the actual uh, sort of snapshot of Philip 66, we can see it's trading in the middle of its 52-week range over here. 
uh, it's actually not very volatile compared to most of the energy stocks on the market today at around 70%. Pays a nice healthy dividend of 5.33%, which is $3.60 based on its current share price of about $70. It's 63% held by institutions and only 2% is short. 63% um, held by institutions may or may not be a good thing. It depends on your um, macro thesis there as well. Uh, some people like stocks that are not very heavily invested by institutions because by the time the institutions get in, um, they feel most of the, most of the uh, meat has been chewed off the bone. On the other hand, when we look at short interest, you can say anyone right now who is short energy must be proverbially nuts because energy is mostly undervalued. So I would not be wanting to be a short in this market as it appears today. How about Philip 66 Partners? While this is trading at the low end of its 52 week range, as you can see over here, it's um, trading at around $27 uh, off a 52 week low of only $19, but a 52 week high of $65. So there's some run rate in there, just looking at the quick snapshot. And then you can also once again see that um, this is uh, not very volatile. It's uh, certainly below the market at 83%. If we look at the PE ratio here, I mentioned that a minute ago, about six and a half. And the annual dividend here is also around $3, which um, at a share price of $27 per share is yielding almost 13%, which is very, very attractive for people who are seeking dividends. Philips Partners is only 20% held by institutions and has a short interest of 3%, so slightly higher short interest than Philips 66. Uh, but as I said on the previous um, screen that I shared with you, you have to be uh, either you know something that I don't know, otherwise you are just uh, very, very bold or just plain crazy if you're shorting energy stocks at these current prices and consumption levels. Let's look at partners specifically in order to address David's um, question there that he had asked originally. Uh, one of the most important ratios to look at for us here is the PEG ratio. I added this uh, little um, description here at the bottom just for people who are not familiar with it. Um, the the PEG ratio is an indicator of the stock's potential value since it accounts for the company's PE ratio and its predicted growth rate. It's a forward-looking PEG and is calculated by dividing the price earnings ratio by the forecasted annual growth rate. Because Philips Partners is in the oil, gas, and consumables funeral, uh, fuels industry and has positive earnings, the PEG, PE, and price-to-book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. PSXP, so Philips Partners seems expensive with a peg value of 13.44, which is above the oil, gas, and consumables fuels industry median peg of 5.23. However, its PE is only 6.47, which is in line with the industry median of around, uh, median of around almost nine times. Uh, if we look at the peg ratio up here, you currently see that uh, Philips Partners is uh, at around 13.4 times, whereas the industry is almost close to zero. So that makes me uh, think that there are some significantly better bargains out there if you uh, are hunting undervalued oil stocks for investment specifically. Uh, a couple of slides just to show you the uh, valuation on uh, Philips Partners. Um, profitability, uh, PS, PSXP converts a larger percentage of its revenue to profits than most other companies. And it has a um, uh, operating margin of 44.8%, uh, which is pretty good. The dividend, of course, we just discussed a minute ago, is currently yielding nearly 13%, which is a, a nice healthy dividend for people who are looking to earn dividends on their investments. And if we look at the trailing 12 months earnings, they declined at a greater rate than revenues. Um, the average company in the oil and gas fuel industry saw also saw falling earnings, but at a slower rate than Philips Partners. How about the financial strength? So this one worries me a little. Uh, not just for David, but just in general, uh, on any energy stock, I don't really like to see a quick ratio of less than one. And this one in particular is 0 0.18 times. Uh, that shows that there are not enough liquid assets to satisfy current liabilities in the event that operating earnings are unable to. However, it is quite efficient and effective in comparison to its peers. When you look at the return on assets, return on equity and revenue per employees, 
etc. So very efficient, uh, not great financial strength. Uh, the growth rate is kind of in line with the rest of the industry. The dividend is very rich. And then uh, it has a good operating margin of 44.8%. But we've seen with some of the companies, including my favorite, favorite and yours, Occidental Petroleum, you can achieve uh, a very healthy operating margin and still uh, end up running at a net loss. So uh, these things are not cast in stone in terms of uh, your investment thesis, but there are certainly things that you want to pay attention to. So guys, that's a wrap on Philip 66. What do you guys think? Let me know in your comments um, and um, we can chat a little bit about whether Philip 66 or Philip 66 partners is worth investing in or not. Uh, as usual, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet and you uh, enjoy the content that I create for you, please click the subscribe button and uh, we'll be back shortly with more and with some other uh, potential stocks that you could uh, possibly want to invest in um, as, uh, as we go. So thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments. And as usual, you will know that I will respond to almost all of them as best I am able to do so. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.